I'm Nate from SRAM. I'm gonna take you through how the SRAM Access app works. So within the app, uh, you can log in and create profiles of your different bikes that you have. So in order to create those profiles, you would hit the plus button within the app. You can then choose to name it. So in this case, I'm going to name it Trek. And then I'm going to add a photo. So I'm going to take a quick photo of this bike that I have here. And I'll select use that photo and save it. Now that I've done that, I will have a profile of this bike. I have not attached any components at this point. So I'm gonna make sure that the components are awake. They wake up via an accelerometer. So I'm gonna move the bike around uh, to, to wake up the components and I'll hit search for components. At this point, the list of components will come up. I can see that there's a red drivetrain here. I'm gonna click connect on that red drivetrain. It will pair those components and I'm gonna add those to the bike. In this case, I've paired to these components before, so I don't need to authorize uh, that I have physical access to these. Uh, if it was my first time pairing to these components, then I would need to physically prove that I can touch the derailers uh, and adjust them, and that's what would allow me to pair them into this bike. Then within the app, you can check firmware status by clicking on a specific component. It will check what firmware it currently has and if you need to update it or not. And then we're gonna move into settings. So within settings, uh, there's a couple of different things here. Um, first is the enhanced mode. You can turn on or off the enhanced mode. The enhanced modes, when they're on, allow you to choose between two different options. So you can choose between sequential shifting or compensating shifting. And so in compensating mode, um, if you hit more info, there's a nice graphic of what it does, but compensating mode, essentially when you shift in the front derailleur, it will automatically shift the rear derailleur the opposite direction uh, as what you shifted in the front. If we move into sequential shift mode, sequential shift mode will allow you to pick the next harder or easier uh, gear ratio depending on which direction uh, you tell the shifter to go. And so if you're shifting into a harder gear and you're in your small chain ring in the front, at some point it will automatically shift your front derailleur to choose the next harder uh, gear ratio for you automatically. Really clean and cool system uh, with those. And then you also have the option within the drivetrain settings to turn on or off the multi-shift mode. Multi-shift mode will al allow you to uh, hold down the controller paddle. Um, and when you do that, it will shift however many cogs you have selected within this multi-shift mode. In this case, we have all of them selected, uh, but you could also limit that to two or three cogs at a time. If we jump back into the menu uh, and go into the control uh, configuration menu, this is where you can change what the buttons do. And so you can assign these buttons, um, the shift paddles and whatever else to do whatever function you want. So it comes set up uh, where it's a, a traditional ETAP shifting style where you have a harder shift on your right side, an easier shift on your left side, and when you hit both controller paddles at the same time, you get a front shift. You can reorient these paddles in any way you want. So in this case, I'm gonna change the left paddle to be the front shift, and then I'm going to assign the combined action of both shifter paddles uh, to the downshift. And so I just completely reconfigured what buttons do what within the program. Uh, you've basically got unlimited control uh, of how this whole system works.